What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 118 of Behind the Tool Belt with TZ Backer Construction. TZ Backer, TZ Backer. Roof and siding, windows, gutter, solar. Roof and siding, windows, gutter, solar. TZ Backer, TZ Backer. everyone for tuning in we are we have a hundred episode 118 here man unbelievable it's crazy 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 i hope everyone's enjoying their their week so far um all my local pennsylvanians man what is going on with our weather when's it going to get warm Ty? seriously i have no <laughs> idea man it's supposed to be i think 71 tomorrow but raining yeah exactly man yeah. exactly high winds rain Yes. So, uh, family, we got a we got an awesome episode here, man. We got um, our buddy from Roofing dot com. Um, he is actually the director of growth for Roofing dot com and for Revolt. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about that. We got him zooming in here from I believe he's in the Carolinas, right? Is that correct? Yep, Green, Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah. So nice. we got Ammon McKinley. What's up, guys? How we doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you? Doing real good. We Living appreciate green. the swag, dog. Yeah. We appreciate the swag. We're yeah. Rocking, oh, yeah. We're rocking today, I mean, man. this wasn't even planned. It wasn't. But we're all representing. <laughs> it was. I pulled up next to Chris, and he had a, he had that shirt on. I was like, damn, is that going to be corny or not? And I was like, shit, it's too late to run home now and change my shirt. So Yeah, and I almost didn't wear my shirt, so I would have been the I would have been the roofing.com guy and not wearing the roofing.com shirt. That's right. That's right. We'll have to get you a TC backer shirt, man. Yeah, just so I need one. Was, it wasn't planned. It definitely was not planned. No, but we like we like to represent, man. We like to bring people on. Um, this show is not about us. It's about our guests. When we have a guest on, obviously anyone that's been following us for these 118 episodes, um, we do do some episodes where it's just me and Ty on here, and yep. we will talk about TC backer stuff and 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 the stuff that we do. But um, you know, nothing gets our juices flowing more than. Um, having, having good guys on here, like, like Eamon here and, mm-hmm. uh, um, you know, all of our past guests. So when we get guests on, we, we try to rep as much as we can and they're doing great stuff. They're doing great stuff. Hunter and, and, and you and Diego and, you know, all the people involved, all the contractors that you guys bring down to revolt. I mean, you guys are, um, from the outside looking in, it's, it's, it's almost like a cult, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, 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 I, and I, I don't say that in a negative way. Um, I say that in a way of, you know, when you have a cult, um, you have a group of people that, that believe all in the same thing, and, and um, the outsiders looking in may not understand, you know what I mean, until you're actually in there and involved in it. Um, but all the resources that you guys provide for free, you know, the, the Facebook groups and um, always helping out, the events that you guys put together, um, it's, I got nothing but great things to say. So. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit, like you're the director of growth, uh, roofing.com and fuel. So give us the breakdown all, on all three of those different companies, or what is it? Yeah, so I'll start with Fueled because that's the shortest one. Fueled is a, is a local mastermind here in Greenville that we started, um, and it, it almost runs itself at this point um, because we started it to be member-led for, for local companies and, and entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate and not be like a BNI where you get a slap on the wrist if, if you don't come to the meetings and don't bring people. It's not about that. The local mastermind and the idea of a mastermind is for 
for people to learn and grow together and to collaborate and, and have good training and stuff like that. So that's what we've been providing with, with fuel. It's been, it's been really awesome. And uh, at first, the whole first year, I mean, I was running the show, driving everything, going to every, every event. And uh, it's cool to see. I mean, I haven't even really needed to, to show up lately because um, we, we've made it to be so member led. And, and that was the purpose in the first place. So, um, you know, now with, you know, moving over to the roofing.com team, um, working on that, uh, director of growth, what does that, what does that title entail? Um, I oversee a lot of the sales and marketing stuff and, and the way I describe it internally is like the glue between marketing and sales because as companies grow, marketing and sales tend to go like this. Mm -hmm. Um, like if you ever talk to any big corporations, Marketing hates sales and sales hates marketing. And uh, my goal is for that never to happen. We're all on the same team. And, you know, if marketing's not getting the right leads, we need to have a conversation about it. That, that you know, that needs to come to me. I need to talk to marketing. If sales isn't following up with the leads quickly enough, I need to talk to sales. And, you know, so it, it's really like blending the two. And then obviously brand strategy. How do we position RoofCon better? How do we position revolt better? How do how do we you know strategically think of different things we can do in the industry? And we've got a couple new things that'll be coming out in the next twelve months or so. Um, but as of right now, I mean, we're pushing hard for Roofcon and Revolt. Those are kind of the two big things we're we're working on right now. Yeah. How often do you guys do the the Revolt tour uh, uh, getaways? The retreats. Mm-hmm. So Ty, Ty's coming to the best one ever, uh, the Dominican Republic in June. That's a member retreat. Mm-hmm. So we're doing two member retreats this year for people who have paid to join Revolt. And we do, we don't have any more free retreats planned this year, but we typically plan them like two months ahead of time. So we'll probably do realistically two to three more this year. Maybe, maybe more, maybe less, um, depending on how things go. Gotcha. And real quick, just for the viewers that um, don't really um, know about that, what exactly is a free revolt retreat? That's a good question, man. I, I, I hate to put you on the spot, Ty, but I would love to hear since you since you just came to one, yeah, I would love to hear that's a really good idea, your man. opinion on that. Like what what is a free retreat? Free retreat? Uh, I got to sleep in until about five thirty. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's vacation, man. Yeah, it was vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. What it and was you stay up until one and talking yeah, to people. Right, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I slept in till, you know, 5.30 instead of getting uh, up at 4 Good four, four hours, man. Right, exactly. That's all I need. Um, no, I mean, shoot, we, there was a lot. There was there was a lot, and it actually took me a couple days afterwards to digest it. So, first and foremost, the, the, the best thing that I got out of it was, was the networking with like-minded uh, entrepreneurs yeah. in the roofing industry and some that actually weren't even even in the roofing industry, but still like-minded, uh, those that were there to want to, uh, you know, self-improve, uh, grow their business, scale their business. And then we had the breakout sessions where you guys went through and, and, and showed us different strategies and, and, and actually, like, uh, gave me a totally different mindset on how to look at things. Like, Hunter had mentioned some things that I don't necessarily want to mention right now just because I felt like they were golden nuggets and I'm going to hold on to them and, and spread them within our regime here. But, um, I mean, just... Just um, a lot of good stuff. We exercised early in the morning. We got to play football, which was a great team building skill. We went to the cemetery, and uh, we did our uh, crap. I always forget it. Not the eulogy, but the uh, uh, when we went to the cemetery. That that was the eulogy. Yeah, the eulogy. Okay, I did. I yeah. had it right. Okay, I yeah. couldn't couldn't think of it there for a minute, but we did that, and that really opened my eyes to like, okay, what are people going to say about me? Okay, and what yeah. I put on there was things that uh, I don't do, that I would like to do, that I would like it to be my legacy is, is how I looked at that. So I had put some things on there that actually got me really choked up, which I'm, really, I'm thinking about right this second, that uh, really made me take a look deep down inside of me um, about some things personally, not professionally, but personally that I would like to change about myself. So, so in a nutshell, that's what it did for me. I mean, I could talk 
the entire show about like what I got out of it and the people that I'm still in contact with today that I had met there at the retreat. And we have been feeding off of each other along with you guys and being a part of the, the private chat groups and, and the private Facebook group and stuff like that, man. I just I continuously keep getting things out of it, man. It was, it was worth every hour that I was there and every hour that I didn't get to sleep and, and those hours that I did get to sleep while I was there, man. It was a great time. Yeah, so from, oh, man, from the outside that, looking in, man, what, what I what I can tell from um, Revolt, you know, with, with that membership, it seems to be a group of like-minded contractors in the roofing industry um, that um, are basically just trying to change the industry, try to become better people, better leaders, um, and and just change the overall industry, man. And, and the, all the stuff that you guys are doing are great, man. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Emin, you got, uh, you got the roof popping in here crushing on you right now, brother. Is he? Yeah, he's saying you look really handsome. I mean, <laughs> to get a compliment from Dave Taggart, I mean, right. my life is complete. <laughs> right, on. my life is complete. I can, I can resign. Right, and just be done. Show's over, folks. That's right. Uh, <laughs> but I appreciate that, man. And, and I want to touch on something you said, like like-minded. What, what is that like mind? You know, like we always talk about, we want to meet with like-minded people. We want to collaborate with like-minded people. And I think it's important to, to define what that like mind is. And, and I think the mindset for us, we always talk about legacy focused leadership. And that's why we do the eulogy exercise. Like, what are people going to say about you? That's your legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you really think about it, like, you don't just want people to say that you built the biggest roofing company on the planet. You know, you don't, you don't just want people to say that, that Ty Backer made a buttload of money. Right. Because what does that life. mean? Exactly. What does that mean to exactly. anyone other than Ty Backer? You know what I mean? Right. And so that that's where we talk about impact over income. And obviously, everyone wants to be successful. You right. know, we wouldn't be entrepreneurs if we didn't want to make a lot of money and, and be successful. But it's the impact piece has to come before that. And, and that's why, you know, typically we only attract people to those retreats who have that mindset in the first place because um, – you know, the team might kill me for saying this, but I think all last year the marketing for the retreats was not that great. You know, that's, you know, fresh, fresh set of eyes, me come in and I'm like, okay, these images, they don't really explain what the retreat's about. Like it's really mysterious what the retreats are about. That that was me stepping in two months mm-hmm. ago. And part of it is that it's that way for a reason. You know, we don't give away a lot of information about the retreats for a reason because we want that experience to be really special and we only want to attract the right people. But yeah, at the same time, I mean, I, I think for us, it's all about legacy focused leaders because a lot of you guys know how to sell roofs, mm-hmm. right? A lot of you guys, I mean, selling roofs is no offense to anyone listening, probably one of the easiest sales on the planet, especially if you're doing insurance work, right? Like door to door insurance, one of the easiest sales out there. So, so then what? You sell a lot of roofs, then what? building a team, building a culture, making an impact. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. You know, and I like the part about leadership. Um, you guys talk a lot about leadership along with the legacy and, and there's much more that goes into being a boss. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, hanging out with you guys and, and reading a lot of books and listening to a lot of podcasts, you know, being, being a leader or in a, leader position um takes a lot of practice okay it's like a muscle we talk about this a lot here actually it's it's like a muscle and it doesn't happen overnight it happens on a daily basis through trial and error through through failures through victories and and to you know provide the right tools for those people around us so they can do their job most effectively and efficiently and and where where my mindset has been going is is trying to develop other leaders okay Mm -hmm. like passing the torch down to somebody so then they can create other leaders and that's where i think legacy comes into play like you know it's not even about what i can do anymore today it's about how good chris is at his job and the leadership skills that he has and passes down to either the younger generation or the guys or gals that may be under him. Same with Vic. Vic has his own department. 
I think he's a wonderful leader. And see, and that's the thing about leadership. Yes, you can be a natu- you can have, I believe, natural leader skills, a few of them, whether it be open mindedness, being humble and teachable. Yeah. But everything else besides that has to be taught, trained, learned through mistakes. You know, you can't just wake up one day and be like, okay, I'm a leader. I'm right. a leader and I'm going to be a damn good leader. You, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it just, it takes time. You, right. you know, it really takes time. And I think that's the thing that um, a lot of people don't understand, yeah. especially yeah. going out in the business on, on their own. They think, okay, well, I'm the boss. You know, and there's just right. so much more to that than just being the boss. Yeah, and there's so many different ways that you can be a boss. You know, you can be a guy that, st- that sits behind the cart and whips the horses. Right. Um, you can be a guy that sits in the front of the horses and, and leads the pack. Um, and I really, like, I really like the analogy that we use about the, you know, training a muscle because, you know, everyone can kind of mm-hmm. relate to that. You know, you can work out for five years straight, get huge, get the best shape of your life. You get complacent and you stop going to the gym. What happens? Your muscles are going to shrink. You're going to get a belly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the same thing with leadership, man. You can you can train that and and be a great leader for a long time. And then as soon as you you think I'm done, I'm done learning. I, I don't need to be teachable anymore. I don't need to teach anyone anything. I'm you know it, it's good. Um, you can lose those those leadership qualities really quick overnight, a lot faster than you gain them. Yeah. Right. So, um, that's that, that's really important. I really love the analogy of of you know training it like a muscle. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And and. What you guys just said, I mean, um, I did a little bit of like pondering before we got on and just thought, just thought about like the problems that we have in the industry. And especially it, it's crazy because I feel like I've got a great bird's eye view of just entrepreneurs in general, um, especially with Fueled last year. Like Fueled was a freaking MBA degree in understanding the, the mind of an entrepreneur. Um, cause it was a mastermind for entrepreneurs and I literally onboarded every single person, all 50 something members that we got, um, you know, they all came through me and I, I was able to do a lot of strategy, you know, discussions with them. And, and, um, now, now in the roofing industry, it's, it, it's no different than any other business at leadership. And as I was thinking before we hopped on today, <clears throat> a couple of the biggest problems that we face in the industry right now are recruiting and retention. Would you guys agree with that? I think that, Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously we've yeah. got the, the economy stuff and yeah. all that stuff, but um, most of the guys we talk to, it comes down to finding good people and then keep them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why at the, at the retreat, I did my training on retention. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was thinking about it and I think most guys, are not the stigma of the roofing industry. Most most roofing entrepreneurs are not the, the stigma of, you know, chucking a truck, um, you know, doesn't have a roofing license, doesn't know how to install a roof. Like we get, we have a stigma out there, but I think most guys are genuinely good people with really good intentions. Mm-hmm. And just like Ty said, um, they are actually, they have all the, all the intangibles to be a good leader, but not necessarily the, the, the full package yet. You know what I mean? And, and cultures, you can be a great leader and still have a terrible company culture. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think everyone has to be self-aware on. Like my self-awareness with the team, I know the things that I'm really bad at right now. And, and I vocalize those like, God, I'm working on this right now. Hopefully you guys will be patient with me while I improve this skill, but I'm really bad at X, Y, and Z. And so I just want you guys to know, I know I'm bad at that and I'm working on it. Right. You know, That's so, so I think that right there, man. Good, yeah. good leaders can have really bad cultures. And we, I see that a ton in not just the roofing industry, but every industry, you're a super good person, but you just like, there's, whether you lack structure or a certain skill set or something like that, there's something missing that could really boost your culture that, that um, it takes self-awareness and, and community and networking and, and coaching to kind of really flesh that out. Yeah. yeah. Would, would you say um, that if, if someone is a good leader, it automatically means that they're a good teacher? Um, I, I, you could probably say yes and no to that question. 
honestly, because it depends on what your definition of a good teacher is. Right. Like some people don't say anything and they're a great leader and a great teacher just by example. Mm -hmm. Some people are excellent communicators and they could be bad leaders, right. you know? So, um, I, I think answer. the answer to that question, you know, could be yes and no, depending yeah, on yeah. the, that's a good answer. Depending on the person. I think a lot of it boils down to trust, you yeah. know, um, to have a, a leader that can, you know, make, make good decisions, um, especially when timing is crucial um, and that they can influence people. You know, being a yeah. good influencer and, and having, and I hate to use this word, but a following um, that, uh, you know, you know, and the big thing, I think both of you said it was leading by example. And one of my biggest um, I guess, uh, things that I've tried to do, especially early on was to be the first one here and the last one to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what that has done over the years is that now I'm probably the third or fourth one here in the morning. You, you know what I mean? I'm not the first one anymore yeah. because we set that, we set that example early on. Now, Brandon, Brandon's here anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour before me. Like, every morning. I mean, and I'm just not going to get up any earlier to get here. Like I'm just not going to do it. Cause I already get up early. Enough. Okay. And yeah. I think he lives further away than I do. Yeah, he does. Okay. So I don't even know what time in the morning gets here. And, and when I just pulled in tonight, there's still people up there working up at the mm -hmm. top shop. So, you know, they, yeah. they would, with, with, you know, it's, it's just crazy how that worked out. Now, if I was that guy that was at home at three o'clock every day, what do you think that office would be like up there? super complacent exactly and probably resentful right of you. right exactly you know so that's why we've always tried to you know that's the thing we tried to have that that trickle down effect i know vic a lot of mornings he's here before me it's kind of like back and forth every other day i'm here before him or he's here before me i'm here later than he is or you know vice versa back and forth and that's that's the the roles that that we've chosen that's the sa that's one sacrifice that i've decided to make in my life so then there are people that if they need to leave at three o'clock it's okay because we're here we're here right. we're, we're keeping the ship afloat you know what i mean that's the sacrifice that i chose to make as a leader you know what i mean and i understand that i understand there's going to be times that i'm gonna have to put my tool pouch back on and i will i'll be the first one to do it to put my tool pouch back on and jump in the trenches and and get it done when when it needs to get done and i think that's where a lot of the respect and the culture had came from because chris mentions it all the time i think what was it like your first my first week you i thought you went on vacation and went fishing and you were down in delaware hanging siding for a week <laughs> <laughs> and then the next summer i think two yeah. years ago do you remember we we were on that we had that tear off with that that homeowner that was kind of challenging we mm -hmm. had that skylight dude it was so hot it was so hot and i pull up to this job site to deliver some material and ties up there and i'm like and he's up there like ripping stuff off and installing stuff and i'm like well i guess I guess we're installing, you know what I mean? So we, we sat there yeah. and we installed that skylight to make sure that it got, it got done properly. Um, but that's, that's the, where I get the respect for my leader. You know what I mean? Because right. the willingness to do that, no questions asked. You know, and it might be wrong to think that way, but I think the construction industry is slightly different than like a corporate job. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, on the production end of things, and that's where I mostly grew up, in my career was in the production end of things. Most of us roofers measure the worth of a man on how well he can swing that hammer. And mm -hmm. I don't think that mindset will ever change. I don't care how great your culture is within your company. And at least for us, because we have, we have 65 in-house brothers and sisters. Yeah. Okay. So that we we're not a paper contractor by no means. Okay. So we, yeah. we actually have a service department. We have window crews. We have gutter crews. Now don't get me wrong. We do use subcontractors, but within our corporation here, there's a lot of us that swing hammer. And, mm -hmm. and I know the mindset because I came from the trenches, you know, you measure a man by self worth by how well he can swing that hammer. And if you want to gain respect, at least in my eyes, and I could be totally wrong, you better get in the trenches and put your tool pouch on because if they see you just roll up in your fancy shoes and you start pointing your finger, they lost respect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think that you have to, you have to prove that you're at least willing to get in the trenches. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like there's that humility piece to it. And, and, and yes, you know, I was thinking about this just last week, like, 
what is the leader's job? Like Ty Backer is the leader of the company. His, his, his job is to, to do what? To complete the mission, right? Mm -hmm. His job is, is the mission above all else. And so the leader, you know, one of the skills you have to develop is the, is the skill of discernment. Like how do I discerning? How do I, how do I delegate my own time? How do I, how, how do I spend my time? And that's a tough thing because there's 87 problems going on. You've got to choose the, the three, not only that, uh, not only that need the most attention, but the three that you know, you can like, that you're the best person for the job for that. Mm -hmm. If it's someone else, you have to let them do it because then you're not a leader. You're a micromanager. If right. you're, if you're doing it and not letting them do it, then that's not leadership. That's, I mean, you're just, I, I think it was, it might've been on your retreat, Ty, where, where I said that I have Superman syndrome, mm -hmm. where I feel like I have to jump over every building. I have to save every damsel in distress. Like I had to have a, have a moment with myself within, you know, even the last few weeks of like, okay, let's think about opportunity cost. If I spend too much time doing X, Y, and Z, I am hurting the company because I'm, I don't, I'm not giving myself time for A, B, and C, which may be less valuable at a tactical level, but strategically, like long term, we're totally going to miss out as a company if I don't spend my time on A, B, and C and get away from X, Y, and Z. You know, X, Y, and Z being more tactical stuff in the weeds. You know, we just switched CRMs and I'm freaking nerding out in there on CRM and it's like, dude, I, I got way too deep into that. It's like, we, there's great companies out there who can set that up for us. We need to hire a company to do it so that I can for, focus more on the strategic things that we're working on as a company. So it's just that balance. Like you never, mm -hmm. it, you can't have a leader who's just on the ivory tower and never, never willing to get dirty. But I don't think you also should have a leader who's just in the trenches because then they're not leading. They're just, they're just working. So yeah. Um, decentralized yeah. command, you know, yeah, Jocko I mean, talks about it well, in, in extreme yeah. ownership. That's, that's decentralized command and being able to not only know when to hand those responsibilities off, but trust in the people that you're handing it off to, even if you know that they're going to make an error, allow them to make that error. You know what I mean? And then right. have a coaching moment after that, um, you know, away from the public, you know, you don't embarrass them obviously in front of people, you know, let them, let them make their decisions that you pay them to make. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just go from there because that's the best way they're going to learn. I, I, I'll be completely blunt honest. I screw things up sometimes, and I only learn by screwing things up. You know what I mean? If, if yeah. I screw something up, I'm going to be like, well, that didn't work. I'm not going to do that again. You know what I mean? Um, but if, if someone's there to, you know, it's like a toddler. If, if you're there to catch your toddler every time he's going to fall, what's going to happen when you're not there to catch him? You know, it's yeah. going to be the worst thing ever, you know, and, and they're not, they're not going to be ready for that. So you almost have to, allow your leaders to fail sometimes your junior leaders and the people that, that you put in those p positions. Um, and you know, Jocko talks about that in that extreme mentorship book. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. tough. That's tough for a lot of people. I know it was tough for me. I was definitely yeah. that guy that did everything. You know, I, I suffered and suffer from the Superman syndrome. You know, it was until somebody or I heard it or I read it someplace where, you know, if, if I could find somebody that could do it 70% as well as I, I yeah. can do it, they're probably doing it a hundred, they can probably do it a hundred times better than the way that I'm doing it now. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I know for me, I had spread myself so thin that I was just mediocre at everything. Like I, I couldn't yeah. excel in any area because I had had myself so stressed out, lack of sleep and just stressing myself out. And then I had realized that I was the bottleneck. Like we couldn't, we couldn't scale anymore until I had let go of some things, you know, and that's when Chris probably came in when this really, this transition really started to happen was probably about four. It's been about four years now. Four come, years. Yeah. That Chris next is, week. Chris has been here and he took over the service department for me. Like he managed all of it at that point in time. I think yeah, PA I and PA, Maryland. PA Maryland and Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and before him that it was me ordered the materials, scheduled the subs, scheduled oh my the house guys. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything, Crazy. dude. I carried a day planner with me, dude. 
And and it it, it, was, it was crazy. And it was like, dude, I got to get all of this out of here. Oh, and, I got yeah. PTSD from that, bro. Right. <laughs> when I right. took that over, it was so bad. Yeah. Oh. Dude, just papers everywhere. You know, you're handing – you know, the, 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 <laughs> the thing about it, when, when I got it, it was – Everything was was paper. You know, we're, we're on CRMs. We're all digital now. You know, everyone can do their job from anywhere. So that's when COVID hit. That's why we were so prepared. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we were built for this and that we didn't even know it yet. You know what I mean? But yeah. we, we literally built ourselves for COVID, mm-hmm. um, for the, you know, the six-foot social distancing. No one's allowed to report to work, all that kind of stuff. We built ourselves for that and didn't even know that we were doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember when I took this over, it was like I had such a hard time managing all the guys and giving them work at uh, work orders every day and I'd have to return them so I'd in the morning time I'd have a stack of papers and I'd make a copy of every single one put the ones that I hand out put the copies of them in a in a currently working on folder and then the next morning I would gain I would grab them back from the guys match them up see what was done well dude I'm getting stuff with like coffee spilled on it if I even oh, get them man. back and it's like dude trying to manage that it, it was I was like, yo, <laughs> we need to we need to come up with something digital here, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well that I mean, Ty did that really well. He like, did. That, he did. That was your system, Ty, and you were great at it. Absolutely. Yeah. But Absolutely. just like you said, Chris came in and it's like Dude, we can actually do this better. Right, because I actually have time to do this. You know what I mean? Where he was like, I got like 45 minutes this morning that I can do this, and then, you know, my next 45 minutes is focused on this aspect. Then I'm going to do accounts payable after that. Then I'm going to work on seeing if materials, if if roofs are ready for tomorrow. Then, you know what I mean? All all that stuff. And it's, you know, I came in and was able to, this is all I do all day. You know, I I have time to let's figure out what's not working here and, and make it better. And we didn't even know what we were getting ourselves into with that and it's no. opened up so much it has you know so much efficiency for the company yeah. man yeah Dude, ty i'm with you man i i really struggle with letting go of like the tactical tactical stuff mm-hmm. um i remember i mean probably i'll be honest probably the most i i i have learned every almost everything i have learned about leadership I learned when i served a two-year mission for my church uh in from 2013 to 2015 and, and the way, the way it's organized, you have a mission president and then about 200 missionaries and me, and, and you go in twos. So you have companionships of two. And, um, I was the, I, me and my companion were like the assistants to the president. So you're like supposed to be the examples and the leaders of the whole mission. And we went, we went around the whole mission doing trainings and stuff like that. And me and my companion just butted heads all day, every day every little decision we could not agree on it. And, um, you know, I I had all these excuses in my head as to like why I was right and he was wrong. You know, like uh, he he had quit taking his anxiety medication and I'm like, well, that's it. I mean, you can't think straight because you quit taking your, you quit taking your meds. So Lost I'm right. Meds, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I literally, I use that as a, I didn't say that to him, but in my head, I'm like, this guy's off his rocker. Um, So we went and met with the mission president and, you know, I just thought my companion was just crazy and I thought all his ideas were absolutely nuts and I thought we should do it this way. And, you know, every, everything I thought it was, I thought my way was the right way, no matter what. And, um, so we go to meet with the mission president. He takes my companion up into his office for about an hour and a half. Mm. And I'm just, I'm just literally sitting in his living room, um, and I'm like, he's probably giving it to him right now, like <laughs> telling him how I'm bad of a missionary he stuff, is. Yeah, yeah and, and then I'm like, I'm like thinking he's gonna come out and and you know my companion is gonna apologize to me and be like, man, I've been such a jerk. And and then they both come out, and uh, he talks to us a little bit together, you know, like, hey, you know. Elder Parkinson told me what, what the pro you know, what he, his side of the story, why don't you tell me yours? And I'm like, well, you want to like go up to your office so we can talk in private? He's like, no, 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 we're going to talk right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so I was like, well, I just, we just can't agree on anything. And, and, um, I, I was honest. I was like, I just feel like some of his ideas are off the wall and kind of crazy. And, 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 uh, he looks me right in the eyes, like staring right into my soul. And he goes, Elder McKinley, Elder is the title for a missionary. And he goes, Elder McKinley, I don't care how you get anything done. Just get it done. 
And, and it was like, in that moment, it was the how is not the most important part. So like I said earlier, like the leader's job is to make sure the mission gets completed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to let go. Like his, his message to me was just like, dude, it doesn't always have to be exactly how you think it needs to be. And, and I was the, the senior companion at that point. And, and it was like, you're, you're being a terrible leader by not letting your junior companion have any ideas or take any ownership or mess up a couple times, you know? So what if he says a couple stupid things in front of 200 missionaries, you know, mm-hmm. are you scared that that's going to be a reflection on you, you know? Um, so anyways, that, that was, I always remember that when I get, you know, when I get maybe into an argument with somebody about how I think something should be done, I always remember that story. And it's like, well, take a step back, let that person have some ownership, let them come up with ideas. And chances are, it's probably going to be better than what your idea was in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you Anyways, might learn something. Right. Just like, just like, you know, my way is the paper way. This is how I've been doing it for yeah. years. Yeah. Digital is crazy, dude. You're nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why, why would we do that? And then look at you guys now. Right. It's like, right. Yeah. Perfectly streamlined. Yeah, it worked out great, and and I was so relieved too because Chris was is is definitely competent. Okay, so we originally hired him to uh, work in the office and and do accounting for us, and then when mm-hmm. I found out he actually had roofing experience along with a degree in accounting, it was like, damn, I got a smart and a roofer, a smart guy and yeah. a roofer. Not that roof, yeah. most roofers aren't smart, obviously. <laughs> you know, look at me. Uh, what are you trying to say, Doc? Yeah, right, right. Liz, Liz is going to fly up here and screw and mess you up, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, we got like 80 comments. Yeah. Thrashing Ty Backer right now. Probably. I'm used to it. I got broad shoulders, man. But uh, uh, but it was it was great because, and in his age, too. So he he's, uh, you know, in his 30s and uh, had been brought up and raised, you know, with a laptop probably in his hand or, or an iPad or something yeah. like that. And maybe not, maybe, maybe not. But he was definitely more tech savvy than I was at that point in time. Plus, too, think about it. Six six years ago, there wasn't CRMs. I mean, right. there, there right. may have been, but um, they weren't advertising them on Facebook or there wasn't a sales guy knocking on my door from Aculinx like, yo, man, you should really try this out. Right. You, you know what I mean? It was Google. We had Google yeah. Calendar. He, Even in 2016, when I was knocking doors selling roofs, I mean, we had Acculinks, but our sales team didn't even have access to it. Right. Because it, it wasn't a tool that we right. could use very effectively. Exactly. Right. So it, it was day planners, you know, day planners yeah. and, and taking notes and, and post-its. I lived, and I still do, live off of post-its, you, you know. But now, you know, with Chris's help and Vic and – and a couple other people, you know, I've been able to move into the 21st century. And that's what we always call it. The day that I turned in my day planner was the day that we moved into the 21st century. <laughs> Out of the Stone Age, man. Dude, that's and what I, call I, the Stone right, Age. I won't throw it away. I got about eight of them, eight years worth of day planners that I have in a filing cabinet that I won't throw away. Like, that's I won't awesome. do it. Because that's what this was built on, man, was mm-hmm. in those yeah. day planners, man. I mean, that's part of your legacy, for right. sure. right. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It is fun. I'm still having fun. Now I'm actually getting ready, not getting ready, but having fun in my career today. Watching him, you know, and watching Vic and, and, and uh, man, Glenn and those guys just, just blossom and turn into mm-hmm. awesome leaders, you know. And like Chris says, he, he makes mistakes, and it's okay. It's yeah. okay. You, you know what I mean? It really is. Does, do I get upset sometimes? Of course I do. But like, like he said, I try not to put him on blast in front of everybody. Have I done things like that before? You bet I have. You yeah. bet I have. And then afterwards was like, oh, God. <laughs> but I need to do that. I need to make mistakes too sometimes. So mm-hmm. I learn from those mistakes, you know, and, and, you know, we all make mistakes. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We all make mistakes, but that's who's, that's, that's how we got to be who we are today. Yeah. Part of being a good leader is, you know, number one, making mistakes, having the courage to um, put yourself in uncomfortable situations and make mistakes. 
and then stand in front of your people and tell them that you were wrong. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. That's, that's a quality of a, of a leader that I always respect, man. If, if someone, I don't really care if you mess it up, especially if I, I'll care if you mess it up and then won't admit that you messed it up. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's, that bothers me. You know, if you don't have the, the humbleness to say, you know what, I screwed up or, Hey, um, I just can't get this right. Can you help me? You know what I mean? That's, that takes a lot for for someone to say that and i respect the hell out of people that can say that mm-hmm. it's tough. yeah to own it yeah man absolutely own it the good and the bad you know yeah. and and not everyone's perfect man i by all means i'm not perfect i just i one of my my fearless 44 video i did yesterday was all about um a mess up that i had yesterday you know i had a moment mm-hmm. of weakness yesterday where i fired off an email while i was pissed off and probably got myself in a little bit of trouble um with with one of our customers but um you know i was like wait what yeah yeah we we had a conversation <laughs> after the fact yeah you know but i'm, I'm not what did you all, say Chris? <laughs> you yeah. know and i saw the email and i didn't chime in i get yeah i get the pressure that he was under at that time like mm-hmm. i i got it so it wasn't like yeah. i picked the phone up you know and what i did was i sat back to wait for a reply and guess what there wasn't a reply yet. there wasn't I've been I've been checking every hour on the hour, <laughs> waiting for that reply to come in. You know, and but I, I fired it off at like ten o'clock in the morning, man, and I called him at, about, at three o'clock when I was headed to get my son off the bus, um, and I think he thought I was calling for something else, and I I was calling him to talk about talk about the email, like, hey, man, I might have screwed yeah. up a little bit, you know, and and that was, you know, that's that's one of those times that I had to admit, like, look, you were wrong. I wasn't wrong in, in defending my company and my guys, but I was wrong in the words that I chose to use in an emotional state. You know what I mean? I fired right. off an email and I said things while I was feeling emotion. And one of my biggest pet peeves is making emotional decisions. Mm. You know, let that but, shit rest for a second. Right. But but you owned it before Ty had to hear about it on the back end. Absolutely. Like, hey, man, yes. just so you know, I made this mistake. Mm-hmm. And and as a leader within the company, you know, Ty's going gonna, Ty's gonna to notice that. And he's obviously, I mean – Maybe the email was written poorly or whatever, but yeah. the fact that you owned it before he had to hear about the nightmare after the fact, right? That's going to give, like Ty said earlier, it's all about trust. Right. He's yeah. going to trust you now to own up to your mistakes mm-hmm. and and have that integrity. And mm-hmm. so, ha- how much more willing do you think your leader is going to be to to give you leadership of other people within the right. company, right? Exactly. To elevate you exactly. to lead more people because he knows you're always. Even if you make a mistake, you're going to do the right thing and try to fix it before or rather than just like trying to sweep it under the rug. Right. You know, Absolutely. that's a huge quality to, to, to own right. up and, and, you know, one of the one of the things that myself and some of the other um, leaders of our company talk about all the time, it's like, you know, when, number one, if something goes down, I mean, there, there's a lot of things that happen in our day to day activities within the company that Ty doesn't know about. You know what I mean? We're, we're paid to make decisions to keep things moving. Um, and usually we only have to bring him in if like something, you know, if we really need advice, if I run into a situation sometimes that I've never come across with his experience, I I might say, Hey, you know, what do you think about this? Have you ever dealt with this? Blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, one of, one of our golden rules is if we're going to come to him with a problem, we're already going to have a suggestion for a solution. You know what I mean? Like, like, let's not just say, Hey, this is messed up. You know what I mean? Hey, I messed this up. This is what we're thinking to fix it. This is what we did. This is the actions that we had or, or the plan that's in place to, to fix this. Or, hey, this happened and this is how we fixed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's, sometimes it's already fixed. I don't remember the last time you guys came to me with a problem without having the solution. Right, right. See, that's, that to me kind of shows that you're, you've dramatically improved your Superman syndrome. Because I think Superman or Superman, Superwomen, whatever, they create a culture where they have to solve every problem. Right. And so you may be, Chris may be a really good problem solver, mm-hmm. but if you don't empower him with that expectation, he's going to come to you with the problems because you, you created that expectation within your own company that I'm the guy who solves all the problems. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, else gets to, nobody else gets to solve problems. And so, and then what's funny is people like that, they, they then go and complain about how nobody in the company ever solves any problems. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. me too. That, that, I'm saying that from experience. It's yeah. like, 
man, like, I wish somebody else would take some initiative. And it's like, well, dude, you don't let us. You take all the initiative for us. <laughs> yeah, you take it all for us. There's no, no initiative left. No, no, I did it. I've yeah. said them. I've said the. I said those same words where it was like, why doesn't anybody make a decision around here? Yeah. Well, because I designed it that way. Yeah. You yeah. know what that reminds me of, Ty? Did you watch Brewer's video the other morning? Um, we we have a local guy here that's he's part of like a, a national mastermind. He's really big in real estate. Um, it's, it's, he's one of our local trailblazers mm-hmm. when it comes to you know leadership and um, you know running running people. You know what I mean? Um, mm. His people skills and stuff. And every morning on his on his commute to work, usually every morning, he does like a little segment about you know he'll just have like a random talk. And his topic the other day it, it caught my attention. Um, it was entre- it was two entrepreneurs stop hiring smart people and then telling them what to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like why you're, you're hiring these people for their intelligence. You know, it's, it's, it's like if, if you don't know how to do accounting and you hire somebody that knows how to do accounting and then you tell them how you want them to do it. Like what sense does that make? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Cause you, you're hiring them cause you don't know how to do this. So stop telling them what to do all the time. Let them let them show you something that of, of their skills. You know, allow them to take the initiative sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, I saw that in the marketing industry because I worked in the marketing industry for a number of years. It's like as an agency, we create this beautiful website for the client and we send it to them and it's like perfectly optimized, super good looking website. And they're like, this is crap. I don't want it. You know, <laughs> and then they, you know, I had one, man, I still remember her name. I'm not going to say it online, but she was so like, by the end of the day, her website looked like a, like a, like a rainbow. Like there was so many different color schemes and everything in it. And she's like, I love it. It's beautiful. And I compared, I even, I was like my pride. I had to validate myself. I sent that website compared to the one that I built her before (laughs) to like eight, eight different people. And I was like, Hey, which one of these websites do you guys like better? And literally mine had all eight votes, but <laughs> that's just, you know, that, that's just the perception, right. right? Like, like it's all about what that person perceives a, as valuable. So, perception so anyways, is power, man, perception is power. Oh, hell yes, for sure. Yeah, man. So I'm going to ask you the golden question, Ammon. Um, Give it to me. We asked this question to every one of our guests. Um, so being in a being in the industry and and being a a relatively successful person man um what motivates you um to not only um get up and show up to work every day but perform at a high level Man that's such a good question I literally was thinking about that today um I try to come up with new answers for it but it really ties back um I don't know I don't know if it was at your retreat where I talked about my core values for myself Ty, yeah, but it do it all ties back to like you, your own personal fulfillment and like what gets you excited. Because if if you're good, you're going to be good for everybody else. And so for me, like my core values, not not the values I want to project onto other people. Like this is what Ammon is like, you know. But the actual things that I value more than anything in life. It's real simple. Fun, success, and relationships. Fun. Like fun is fun is number one for me, yeah. dude. Like if I'm not having fun, I am freaking out. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> and, and it doesn't and it doesn't take much to for me to have fun. Right. You know, I can I can make I can make any situation pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um, success for me, like I, I, success, I'm I'm pretty competitive person. I'm extremely hard on myself when I don't achieve my goals. And, and, and so I would say like, I I just value achieving things like not for anyone else's validation, but for my own validation, you know, I was one, one cheesy example. I was, you know, I was built a little bit better than I am now, but, um, in high school I wasn't, you know, super gifted athlete. Um, but, my sight was I want to be state champion and all state running back. That's those are my two goals. And didn't get to be a state champion, but I did become all state running back. Awesome. And comparatively, like there were a lot better athletes that I beat out for that all state position just because that was what I set my sights on. Mm-hmm. 
and I worked my freaking butt off to get there. I, I will work beats one, beats talent every yeah, day, bro. Yep. I'll work a thousand percent talent. say that nobody in that state worked harder than me that year. You know, those two years, my junior and senior year of high school, and then um, relationships. Like I just love people, and yeah. and uh, you know, communication. That's why I love sales and marketing. Um, but just connecting with people. Uh, that's why I immediately jive with Hunter and Revolt and Fuel and all the stuff that he does because he brings people together. Mm-hmm. And and that really is what it's all about. Like Humans are tribal. We need tribes. And sure, uh, I think especially with the pandemic, man, like that in-person connection, it's like people don't even know how to do it anymore. It's so right. weird. People cannot like carry a conversation anymore, and it's it, it's pretty sad. So fun, success, and relationships. I mean, that's what that's what drives me. If I have those three things, I could be in the roofing industry. I could be selling energy drinks. Like, if I have those three things, man, I'm good. Right on. So I have this awesome this awesome saying that I like to say, man. Um, and and you probably live by this. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, and, and you can have fun doing shitty stuff. I mean, I remember when I when I was in the field doing commercial work, man. One of my favorite jobs. Um, we spent about a week and a half straight, um, ninety ninety five degrees on the roof, tearing pitch off. And if anyone's ever torn pitch off, man, <laughs> yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you're peeling your skin off your body at the end of the day from the chemical burns uh. and stuff. And but, dude, I had such a blast just because of the people that I was with. You know, we were, dude, we were doing the shittiest work that I've ever done in my life. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, had, I was having fun. You know what I mean? While I, we were all there doing shitty work, and we knew it was shitty work, but we made the best out of it. You know, yeah, you, know, you we, go home happy because <laughs> yeah, those relationships, right. right? Right. We were on a rate job, too, though, so that definitely helped a little bit. Oh, but I'm sure. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had a little bit of success in there, too. Right. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. There you go. Big success. Success. Um, so what, what advice would you give to somebody that's trying to establish their own core values? Oh man, that's a good question. I I mean, the the real simple cookie cutter answer, I don't know if you could find it. Um, if you looked up Jack Canfield core values exercise, it's been years since I did it, but, um, it was a Jack Canfield exercise where literally, um, he gives you a sheet of, a ton of like different core values and you circle as many as guy with you and you try to, you try to narrow it down to like three to five. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, that's really simple cause you sit there and I think it's the questions you ask yourself, not necessarily, um, the values themselves, but the questions you ask yourself to get there because I personally believe most people when they say their core values, it's more of a sales pitch than anything. Like, People are trying to project their core values to, to prove themselves to other people, right? Like our core values are honesty and trustworthiness. And it's like, okay, that, that should be a given, you know, like most human beings should know that those are, those are the right things to do. Let's go a layer deeper. Like what do you actually, what do you value in your life? What, what is the top three things in your life that you can't live without? Those are your core values not some principle that you want to project as a sales pitch. That's, that's what I believe. That's what I found most meaningful is to actually ask myself, okay, what could I absolutely not live without? Like what's non-negotiable in my life? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what my core values are. Right on. That's good info. Yeah, man. that is, that's man. Good info. That, that is great. So, okay. So you've been on this, uh, I don't know, self-improvement, you know, mission or journey for quite some time, what, like what triggered that? Like, did something drastic happen in your life where you overweight and you were just tired of it, or like what, yeah. what happened? Like, what what put you on this journey? I mean, I'm I don't know. It's my dad. Honestly, is is my dad is just he was the hardest worker on the entire planet. Like, he ran a business, had a pizza shop. Um, he rodeoed on the weekends. Um, I mean, literally he would run a business 12 hours a day and then pick me up and take me to football practice, coach my football team, come home, feed the animals, read scriptures with the family, go to sleep, wake up at 4am, 
do it all over again. And, and then on Saturdays, we'd be up at 6 a.m. digging freaking trenches in the yard, which I hated at the time. But mm-hmm. now, looking back, I'm grateful for it. And then Saturday night, he'd go ride a bareback horse in a rodeo. Like, And then Sunday, he spent all day serving in the turfs. Like, my dad is just an absolute machine. An animal. And, it sounds like an animal. I mean, it was just, like, it was just ingrained in me. Like, yeah. I, I am such a wuss compared to my dad. Like, my work ethic doesn't even hold a candle to his. To this day, and he's 60 years old. Like, um, so, so I think it was just ingrained in me, like, there's no other way to live. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't grow up with that kind of example in their home. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, I feel for people who don't have, like, strong parents in their house because I have absolutely no clue. I mean, I, I almost could guarantee you I would not have, have the work ethic I do if it wasn't for my dad. So I, I really do feel, feel for people who don't have that strong example in their home. Yeah, man. Your dad sounds like an amazing person, man. Absolutely, man. He's yeah, he's great. My great, hero. Great answer because that's not at all what I was expecting. That's that's a great answer, man. Great stuff. Yeah, and and there's times like there have been times in my life where I would I didn't feel like I had like a vision for my life, you know, like especially when I realized I'm not that great of an athlete and my football career is over. Like, what what the heck am I going to do with my life? That's when I got into the roofing industry. Mm-hmm. And what's funny is, is I was doing spring ball at a, at a one double a school, trying to walk onto the football team. And I was, that was in Idaho. And then I was driving to Utah every weekend to go sell roofs. And I literally was like, dude, I might be crazy, but I like selling roofs more than I like playing football now. <laughs> and it was just like I, it, the people aspect of it. I just loved it. So, um, like I said, I think whatever I do, if I can have fun doing it, mm-hmm. if I can, if I, if I can achieve success doing it, and if I can build relationships with people, I mean, I'm a pretty easy guy to please when it comes to, to all that stuff. So, I think what drives me really is just that you know, I I don't know any other way. Number one, um, and uh, number two. If I have something to work on and I see any deficiency in it, my mind's going to go crazy until it's like, until it's, you know, having success. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah, that is good stuff. Man. Yeah. So we're, stuff. we're winding down here a little bit. Um, Vic, did, did you, do you have Eric's video that we played last week? Do you, Eamon, do you mind if we play Eric with uh, roofers and recoveries video about yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, national roofers and recovery day? Please do. Cool. We're going to run that until the 5th of June for him. No problem, You're brother. You're good, man. Yeah. You're good. Plenty of time, dude. You're Plenty good. So, so what's the, what's, while, while Vic's getting ready here, man, what's the, uh, what's, what's the deal with RoofCon this year? Let us get the secrets, oh, bro. Man. Let us get the secrets. <laughs> Oh Let's man! I wish stuff. I could tell you we're gonna announce one of the headline speakers pretty soon. One of you dang roofing dot com so guys cool. on our show is gonna give us some damn secrets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, this this next one it was it's crazy that this is the year this person's speaking because he was literally my my childhood hero. Like what? other than my dad, mm-hmm. this yeah. guy it might sound cheesy and corny when we announce the name, but. uh this guy was like my hero and, and knowing that I'm going to get to meet him this year is like, I'm Did probably you. like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not like a fanboy kind of guy, but I might faint. Like yeah. I've never, you know, wow. just somebody I looked up to all through, all through high school. So, so you guys will, you guys will be excited when we announce the headline yeah. speaker. It should be within the next three weeks or so. Cool. Very nice. exciting. Nice. I can't wait. Let me guess. Is it Chuck Norris? What's up, everybody? Eric Obrout here with Roofers in Recovery. We wanted to let you know about National Roofers in Recovery Day. It's on June 3rd, and here's what we're asking. We want to get 150 contractors throughout the entire country to decide and agree on June 3rd to build a roof in honor of National Roofers in Recovery Day. And so here's the thing. We are not asking you to donate the entire cost of the job. 
Okay. Yeah. No stress. Yeah, we didn't get the video. We got the audio. Um, oh, did it? <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, we'll we'll catch up with that next week. If not, maybe we'll play it through the week. Yeah, we'll just we'll touch on it here real briefly. Um, so basically, what they're doing, Roofers in Recovery, is um, a national organization um, that focuses on trying to get people in the roofing industry the help they need with addiction, um, you know, and and stuff of that nature. So, um, National Roofers in Recovery Day is what date, Ty? June fifth. June fifth. Um, and basically, oh, third. June, 3rd, June, June 3rd, June 3rd, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, on June 3rd, they're asking um, contractors around around the country um, to do one roof that day. And they're not asking you to donate all the proceeds from that roof. They're, they're telling you pay your, pay your subs, um, pay, your, pay your supplier, um, just the profit that you make on that job that day, donate to Roofers in Recovery. And if they can get 50 contractors... Um, from around the nation to do that on that day, they will be able to send what is it, fifty roofers? Yeah, I think to so treatment. They're trying to get one hundred and fifty oh, yeah. contractors. Yeah, yeah, so they can send fifty. Yeah, one hundred and fifty contractors to send fifty people. Send fifty people, mm-hmm. and I really liked. We had Bubba on last week. Um, he sits on the board at Roofers in Recovery, and I really liked the angle that he put on that. You know, um, he was one of those guys that got help. Um, and his goal now is to make generational impact, you know, make generational change. And, you know, if we have 50 guys in the industry, in our industry, that are able to be helped, that now have the mindset to make generational change and generational impact, you know, be a better man, be a better leader, be a better father, um, you know, be a better friend. Um, that's a lot of impact, man. So, um, yeah. For 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 something so little, you know, there's a, there's a lot of big time roofing contractors in this country. You know, absolutely. Um, I I think that that's an amazing thing to be doing, and I think it's a pretty achievable goal, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and, and um, some people may not think that uh, because they haven't had haven't been through the experience of of recovery that it's not relevant to them. I can promise you every person on this planet has been affected by mm-hmm. Absolutely. addiction. Absolutely. And so, I Some mean, might not even know it. And yeah. You know think I mean? about Some your cousin. Right. Yeah. Think about your grandma, your dad, your, your, your little brother, somebody, I, so, everyone out there knows someone yep. who's been affected by addiction and this can help somebody, someone get out of it. Right. Absolutely. Can keep a family together, man. Can keep, can keep someone's dad um, yeah. you know, succeeding and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I love the idea, man. I have people in my family that, that are in the program that are, you know, have been sober for quite some time now that I've seen transformations, man. I, I had a childhood where, um, you know, my parents were, were addicts and stuff. So like, I know yeah. the impact that it can have, um, number one on children, on family, on friends, oh, yeah. um, on your, on your work life, all that kind of stuff. So just because it doesn't affect you, that's a great point, man. It, it, you know, it, good for you that you're that you don't suffer from addi- addiction. But I guarantee right. you, somewhere in your life, you have somebody that is suffering, and you have been affected by it. So mm, for sure, yeah, it's such a great cause. It really is. Yeah. Yep. So that's our industry, man. That's that's the direction our industry is going. You know, people like yourself and and Hunter, um, Eric, and and you know all all those guys, Paul. Um, yep, you know, Cox. Bubba, like yep. all, all the, all the, all the guys in our industry that are of like mind that, mm-hmm. that we say, yeah. you know, um, the, the lighthouse in the fog, you know what I mean? Like that's, yep. that's, that's the example that I like to put there because, you know, 10 years ago, Ty, you'll, you'll, you say it all the time, man. We didn't, that, that wasn't, that didn't exist. Right. Like you couldn't, you couldn't call up another roofing contractor and say, no. Hey man, I need help. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that yeah. be like, okay, then go to church or something. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to, they're not going to offer, you know, an ear for free. You know, we got guys like David Taggart. He put a post on the other day. Uh, shout out to you, man. Like mm-hmm. he even said, like, I, I will never take money to go, you know, talk to people. Like, you yeah. know, I want, I want to make sure that no one has to go through all the bullshit that I went through to, to get to, to get myself in a position to succeed. I just want to see everyone win yeah. without having to go through all the hardships that I went through. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the roof yeah. hustler, 
I yep. mean, he's he's another perfect example, man. Oh yes, Deshaun. He's, yeah, yeah. He's an awesome. Yes, he's like look, like the only thing that I, the only reason I do this is because I went through so much shit mm-hmm. to figure out how to be successful. I just want to give people the tools, man. I, I want yeah. them to not have to go through the struggles that I went through to to learn how to sell roofs and be successful and manage that and your family at the same time. You know, mm-hmm. so it's yeah. good stuff. I mean, this this is such it's, it's such a phenomenal business in and of itself it's it's such a phenomenal way to make a living roofing it's it's profitable if you do it right and and so again we always talk about impact over income Mm -hmm. like you can make a gigantic impact and you don't have to tie that impact to roofing specifically but roofing is a great vehicle to Mm -hmm. do that Mm -hmm. the roofing industry is is such a good vehicle to be able to make an impact and, and so, I mean, some people feel ashamed, like, oh, I'm just a roofer. Like, dude, no, you're a leader that happens to do roofing, mm-hmm. right. you know, if you choose, if you choose to be that way. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. 100%. You know, I, I, I just want to, you know, put this in here real quick. I, I spoke on this last week. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a homeowner out there, man, and, and, you know, we, we always tell homeowners, um, number one, this isn't a, a sales pitch. This show is not about trying to bring in clients or anything like that. You know, we have marketing and all that kind of stuff for that. Um, this, you know, when you're bringing people in, don't necessarily just look at the materials that they use, um, the cleanliness of their truck and all, all the normal things yeah. that you look at about a contractor. Figure out what they do in their community, man. Mm-hmm. F- figure, out, figure out the impact that they have, you know. Um, I, I, I'll say this example when I said it last week, we had a, a home show in Gettysburg a couple weeks ago or a month ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was speaking with a, a potential homeowner, um, or a potential client with one of our salespeople and they had one of our, um, our local other contractors, other roofers, uh, bags in their hand. So they, they had been to their booth first and they're like, you know, we, we went over and talked to so-and-so and you know what? you know, what, what's different about you guys? Like what, what makes you guys different? And I was like, to be honest with you, I mean, they're master elite GAF certified, you know, they're in GAF energy, just like us. Um, they're probably going to put the same, same stuff on. They're probably going to do a great job just like we will. Um, but what they don't do, um, they don't do the 21 Turkey salute where they feed 600 people on Thanksgiving Eve. Um, they don't donate to their local food bank. Um, humongous donations, twice a year. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't volunteer in the community as much as we do. They don't give away free roofs. They don't build stuff. You know what I mean? All this stuff yeah. that, that we do for the community, just know that if you spend money with us, yes, you're going to get the same material, probably the same kind of customer service, but what your, what your money is going towards is where we're different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're not just lining our pockets with that. You know, no. we're giving that back yeah. to the community. Yep. So. A certain percentage of each <clears throat> job goes towards the community. Right, right. So... Which is incredible. Absolutely. And, 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 and I'm not saying that to brag whatsoever. We don't do it for any recognition. I'm, I'm more or less in giving that example out there because if you're a potential homeowner, um, not even necessarily just for the roofing industry, you know, if, if, you're, if you need to pay somebody to do a service, do a little bit of background on them, not just, you know, how good of a contractor and how good a customer service they are. What do they do for their community? How do they treat their people? Um, you know, what is your money going to fund? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's, that's what I've start, started to learn, and, and I got that from the roofing industry, from RoofCon, from the, the mm. roofing space, man, all the like-minded people. So mm. um, just that's do your awesome. research, man. Yeah. Good stuff. What a great show. Yes. Yes. It's an excellent show, man. Excellent show. We appreciate your time. Yeah, I could do this all night. I, could yeah. do, I mean, yeah. we could probably talk till midnight. <laughs> Absolutely. I love you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> Great. We're so grateful that you came on the show. Thank you for coming on the show. We'll have you on again. Uh, we can't wait until RoofCon. I can't wait for the Dominican. And, uh, man, thank you guys for everything that you guys do for our industry. Way, way to go. Thank you for the changes that you guys are making and the impact that you're having on me and everyone else around you. Thank you. Yeah. Man, it's super humbling to hear that. I mean, I've only been with Roofing.com for a couple of months. Um, but... Things are there are so many cool things that are going to happen. Roofcon four, mm-hmm. if it's not going to be better than Roofcon three, we're not going to do it. You know what I mean? Like right. Roofcon four is going to be better than Roofcon three, not just logistically because I know everyone complained about having to walk. We fixed that problem, but the the impact and and the and the personal development and the training, like 
again, uh, like you were just saying, that's not a sales pitch for your company. Like mm -hmm. even, even if I did not work here, I would, I would just encourage every single roofer on the planet, like bring as many people on your team that you can afford to bring at least your leadership team and a couple of salespeople bring them to roof con mm -hmm. because the price that you're going to pay for the tickets is so little compared to the impact it's going to have on you personally as a leader. And, and not only that, but your team, because there's free time. Like there's, there's time to like go do team, team bonding experiences. Like last year I wasn't on the, on the roofing.com team, but I went to roof con. I was still primarily focused on fuel me and a bunch of the fueled members went down, mm -hmm. and um, afterwards we went to Universal Studios and yeah. just had a good time. We rented an Airbnb and like we just we made memories that mm -hmm. we'll never forget. None of us will ever forget. Yep. Uh, you know those memories of like Absolutely. hanging out in the Airbnb, those conversations we had. You know, it, it sets the tone for the con the roof con will set the tone for the conversations you have mm -hmm. that evening, and it'll be some of the best personal development you ever have the conversations you have just with your team after listening to the speakers. Mm -hmm. So I hope that didn't sound too much like a sales pitch. Yeah, not, not at all, at all. Dude. But, Maybe but, the people that haven't really, been to RoofCon, but we've been to RoofCon and we, we know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's the yeah. thing. The conference isn't about selling you anything either. That's what's cool about it. It's definitely all about um, improvement, you know, whether it yeah. be, you know, personally, uh, professionally, whatever. It's all around – about improvement the speakers that you guys had last year were just phenomenal we came home high from it and and continued to stay high from it for months mm -hmm. i mean yeah. months it was the only thing that we talked about like hey remember when so-and-so said this or who said that or you know we were just <laughs> you know we were jacked up like the yeah, entire yeah. weekend and came home jacked up and it was it was just cool and we're really and it was a good team building experience Absolutely. as well, too. Absolutely. You know, we uh, we brought um, the significant others, and they got to bond as well as you know Baker, myself, Vic, and Glenn got to bond as well. It was it was good all around, good. And and I know the significant others got just as much out of it right. as we did. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, it was good. I'm really looking forward to this year. Yeah, man. you didn't. You don't even have to be in the roofing space to go to no. RoofCon, like for real. Oh, I know. Yeah, none of the field members were actually roofers. They right. all had different businesses, yeah. and they were like, "Man, and and fuel, we we charge a, a a hefty amount, you know, a decent amount of money to join fuel." Mm -hmm. And they were like, "Man, just going to RoofCon was was worth the, the price of my field membership." Absolutely, absolutely. So, so yeah, and they, I mean, they're not even in the industry, right? So, yep, yeah, good stuff. Man. I think this year, man, you know, we 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 may be driving a. A U-Haul truck with the studio down there mm -hmm. might be setting up, setting up behind the tool belt down there, man. Hey, right. yeah, yeah, that would be sweet. Yeah, it would be. It yeah. would be. We'll get the whole fam family down there. Yeah, dude, for sure. Awesome, man. So, well, thank you guys so much yeah, for dude, having thank me you. on. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much, man. Keep being great, brother. Yeah, we're we're watching hey. everything that you guys are doing over there, man. Keep being great. You guys too. We're watching you. The rest of the industry is watching you guys. Because I mean. I'm sure, Ty, you feel like you've got a long way to go, but, man, you guys have a smooth and awesome and fulfilling operation going on. Thank you. Up awesome. there. That's so, so, so I mean, yeah, we're just definitely. We're just getting started, man. Yeah, and I love that you're sharing it yeah. with other people. Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you. Awesome. Well, TC Backer family, That's right. um, if you guys have not hopped over to the roofing.com Facebook page, make sure you go check them out. The Revolt, the Fueled, all, all that stuff. Go give them some love because they're great in the community. They're mm -hmm. great for the leadership. They're great for the industry and just for people in general um, in this country. In this time, man, we need more of that. Uh, make sure you guys give them a give them a holler. Go check out roofing.com too, man. It's a great website. There's all kinds of great resources on there. Make sure you guys check out the Roofers in Recovery Facebook page for all details on that. If anyone wants to make donations, the links are attached to that. You know, um, you don't have to necessarily participate in Roofers in Recovery Day to to make an impact. Um, they take donations year round that, and it really goes to help a lot of people. So, Absolutely. we appreciate you guys for constantly tuning in, um, and. It's been a great episode, man. We appreciate oh, yes. you. And we will catch everyone next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for episode 119. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week. Have a good one.